today I'm trying out a new laser engraver. This is the K10 from Wayne Lux and this model retails for under $200. So I'm very intrigued by the price point. It's a three watt laser head. So that's going to be engraving only, but if you only need to engrave, I don't know. I'm curious to see what I think of it. It came with the user manual and all cords required to operate it. And the user manual, in my opinion, was very easy to follow. Something distinct about it right off the bat is this hood design. It flips up and down to cover the laser head as it's firing. And I really like that. It feels very secure and enclosed and safe, which is important. It also has an open bottom, which I think is really awesome because even though you're working with a small bed size, you're not limited to just small pieces. You can place this on top of a tabletop or on top of something larger and still be able to engrave on it. You can control this using a desktop computer if you want, but you also can control it with an iPhone app, which I really enjoy when I can control things using an iPhone. It's just quicker and you don't have to deal with the cords. It was free to download, it was easy to download, and it was pretty good to navigate. Did not work on an iPad though. Um, so that's, I'm just going to go ahead and do my first engrave. I'm just going to like, this is just a scrap of, um, like cardboard. And there was a feature in the design software where you could like draw things by hand. I have no clue what a practical application of this would be. Maybe you could like sign your work using this, but I just made a smiley face to engrave. So with it being a three watt laser head, it's gonna be a bit slower um, in comparison to like a more powerful laser, but it's gonna be just as effective in that it like engraves. I didn't speed this video footage up at all. This is real time. I did end it early though, just cause I, I got the gist. Um, I felt comfortable with the machine and that's the quality I got. I think I maybe overfired. I think I could have dialed my settings down just a bit, but it's just a test. So who cares? Okay. Now for real, we're gonna be making an ultra personalized charcuterie board. I think this would be the perfect hostess gift or if you're going over to someone's house, you know what I mean? To surprise them with, they'll love it. They won't know what to say. <laughs> it's also gonna allow me to put this engraver to the test on a range of textures. First one, crackers, buttery flaky crackers. These ones are really good. They're from Trader Joe's in the like four cracker assortment. Check it out and let me know who you like them. <laughs> Red the shop dog is crying in the background because she really wants to eat it. The focusing mechanism on this laser is different than anyone I've ever used before. Um, I'm just spinning the lens until the laser pointer on what I'm engraving is its smallest size that I know it's in focus. I don't know if that's precise enough for some, but I personally thought that was really quick and easy and liked that. So the settings I put in initially were um, a bit underwhelming in that they didn't show up at all. Um, so I needed to increase those a couple times. It took three increases of power settings to get it to the point that I could see the engrave relative. So relative to other like a 10 watt diode or a 15 watt diode or a CO2 laser, it's a lot less power. You're going to be able to engrave on plenty of things, but it's going to be a lot like every little bit of increase in power is going to be like less distinct, if that makes sense. So. That's just something to consider if you're in the market for a laser engraver. It's also going to be slower than a higher powered laser will be to get the same job done. And there's probably certain materials that handle, they, they require that level of sensitivity to get a certain level of precision. So, you know, not a good thing, not a bad thing, just a thing. And I, I often work on very powerful lasers. So like, they're just not as sensitive to getting the settings just right as this one is. All right, speeding it up and there's the results. This is a flakier cracker with a more delicate texture. So I wanted to go in and give it a try on something with a denser, more consistent texture. So I went in with one of these guys next. You'll also notice I'm using the front left corner for all of these engraves. That is because I could not figure out how to get the design to start from a different origin point. I'm sure there's a way to do that. I just didn't it but it wasn't obvious on the interface and it ended up being quicker to just move the cracker than it did to figure out how to move the design um, but yeah something I wanted to point out because it wasn't obvious to me um, and I use a lot of these machines so you know all right up next is the cheese I don't think this is gonna work well just to be clear going in this is nothing 
to or against the laser. Um, and it didn't really engrave the cheese so much as it made a Michael-shaped pool of oil on the surface of the cheese, but that was still an interesting effect. I guess. It only seems fair to also try engraving something normal with this because to be fair, crackers don't have a consistent thickness really or texture, which are both factors that are gonna make engraving a little bit more challenging. So we are going to laser engrave this slate charcuterie board to see what that, how that goes. Um, this is a great example for how the open bottom can be utilized because this charcuterie board doesn't technically fit in the laser cutter, but it fits very nicely on top and it handled the engrave with really great precision. We've got crisp edges. Yeah, it looks really good. Nothing, no notes. I think that this is a great laser engraver option for two groups of people. Firstly, if you just need engraving, nothing more, nothing less, really simple, straightforward engraving and don't want to pay for extras or deal with all the extras, this is super budget friendly and gets the job done. For just a couple hundred dollars more, I do think there's options on the market that offer a whole lot more. But if you don't need any of that, then this one's got you covered. The other thing I think this is great for is if you just want to dip your feet in laser engraving, see what, see what it's all about. Um, you're very okay with outgrowing it potentially, but you know, just want to kind of try it for the first time. This one was really user-friendly. I had it working within like 10 minutes having it out of the box. So I'd say go for it. And if you want to um, laser engrave custom charcuterie boards for all of your loved ones, it did do very well with that. <laughs> 